Hello, happy Friday everyone. Uh, just got back from some record shopping, so I'm going to go over my purchases. Uh, thank you for watching the videos, thanks for your comments. Um, if you're watching this video right now, and you look up here and you don't see a green check mark, well, shame on you. Uh, please subscribe so you can uh, come along with me on this psychedelic travel log through uh, all, <laughs> all these good records that I have. So. Uh, thanks to those who subscribe and comment. Uh, again, it's appreciated. I wouldn't do this if you wouldn't be there. So um, we'll go through some of the purchases here. Uh, everything I got for under 50 bucks. So this was a, definitely a good day. Uh, and you'll see why in a second. So the first one I got uh, Shaken All Over, Chad Allen, and the Expressions, uh, which actually morphed into the Guess Who. If you're on my channel right now, and you're, you look over here and you scroll down, there's uh, Shaken All Over and also Till We Kiss, which are sort of the two big hitters um, that would have been off of this. Uh, it's from on the Scepter label and from about 1965. So uh, very hard to find around these parts. So definitely excited for this one. Uh, next up, we got the Paul Butterfield Blues Band with East West. Um, of course, this album is kind of the jumping off point for I would say, you know, psychedelic music in general. Of course, Paul Butterfield, you know, blues band, traditional folk blues sort of deal going on with them. Uh, but Buried on Side 2, very last song on the album, uh, clocking in at about 13 minutes, is East West, which uh, just a complete mind blower, um, kind of a fusion of uh, raga and rock. And th they did it. I would say that this is kind of the, the starting point of psychedelic music. I, I would say without this album, uh, it would be kind of interesting to see what would have happened. So excited for this one. Uh, red label pressing. So, eh, you know, it is what it is, but we'll take it. So uh, next we have uh, Pacific Gas and Electric. Are You Ready? Are You Ready sort of became a Northern Soul hit, I would say. Might be one of the you know, probably the, the best known album slash song, I would say. Um, awesome getting this. I have some of their 45s, but this is the first LP from this band. So sort of a heavier guitars, R&B kind of sound to it, which, you know, definitely uh, easy on the ears, a, a pretty good listen. So good, good stuff. Uh, I got the next four albums. I got four albums from the Buddha label, which is really cool. Uh, Buddha, of course, known for their psychedelic pop bubblegum psych, if you will. Um, uh, definitely some good stuff. Captain Beefheart, of course, was on the, the very first LP released on the label, which it actually was on a red label and not the traditional kaleidoscope, you know, tie-dyed psychedelic sort of label that you usually see. Um, first one I got was Barry Goldberg, Street Man, uh, which I would say probably was from, this is about 69, I want to say, Barry Goldberg. Uh, played organ, so it's kind of a Booker T and the MG sort of thing. Um, you know, it's not, not anything great, but uh, still a nice little addition to the collection. Uh, next I got Calliope, which uh, actually is the band Danny O'Keefe was in, you know, of course before he collaborated with Jackson Brown and did some, you know, folk albums, singer-songwriter stuff in the mid-70s. Uh, you know, no, this is not really a psych record. Um, you know, it's like a, just a sort of a garage band kind of sound. Uh, definitely have some weirder moments on it. Uh, they cover Like a Rolling Stone, uh, Hound Dog, and also California Dreaming. So, uh, you know, again, another great addition into the, the collection. Um, this one, of course, you may have seen before, the uh, Kazanets and Cass Super Circuits. Um, pretty much was a super group that these guys did. I mean, they were pretty much the brainchild. They were the Ohio Express and, you know, 910 Fruit Gum Company, same, you know, band every time. Uh, but this is like with the Shadows of the Night, end of the 60s, um, Quick Joey Small, which is pretty much their only known hit as the Super Circus. Um, so, a nice little addition. I think they've only did two albums. The other one kind of has pictures of the band members, I, I think, standing in like a junkyard on cars and whatnot. So another, you know, weird album on the Buddha label. Excited about it. Uh, the last one that I got from the Buddha label, um, this one was just, I bought this on a whim. I, I would say a couple of things came into play here. The album uh, on the Buddha label, so I'm going to say 
I'm going to go with it. I'm, you know, expect great things. Good label because, you know, it seems to always have a little bit of quality with it. But at the same time, some of the, you know, the weirder stuff, not probably not the most, you know, entry level kind of thing. But uh, it's, uh, it, I, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, but it's uh, Bengali Balls, B-A-U-L-S, uh, at Big Pink. And it's sort of, um, it sounds like, you know, Indian music, kind of like a Ravi Shankar kind of feel. Uh, the crazy thing is, you know, at Big Pink, what do you think about when you hear that? The band. Well, that's pretty much Garth Hudson and the band produced this. Um, and, and I'll tell you what, the, the liner notes when I was kind of listening to this in the store, um, man, they just name drop everybody, like Dylan, the band, Donovan. Uh, it's just, I, I, it's, it's crazy, but it's good stuff. It's definitely like, you know, I, I probably won't listen to it that much, but it's definitely like a, you know, an interesting little curio in the collection. So, uh, was excited to find that, and and you know, I, I felt like I really couldn't go wrong. It's produced by members of the band. You know, I kind of like that the Indian music, and uh, of course on the Buddha label. So there you go. Like I said, three things, and you know, will will make me jump, and that's what it did. So. Uh, next one. This is the only album I have by John Prime. First one, uh, first his first album, and uh, it's I, I see it on lists all the time. Really haven't had a chance to kind of explore him as an artist. Um, but uh, Illegal Smile, I have heard that before. Sort of, you know, it's in the the classic rock sort of you know tongue in cheek wink, wink kind of thing. You know, the has the has some of the you know the hippie jokes I guess you could say in it. Um, was excited to find this one so I've, I always hear good things about it but really never have a chance to pick it up it's kind of hard to hard to find uh, I got Eric Anderson this is his second album uh, so stereo pressing they had the mono and the stereo I went with the stereo one it was in a little bit better shape um, but it's pretty much just Eric Anderson acoustic guitar a couple of tracks have him uh, with Harvey Brooks who he did session work with Dylan uh, also I think he plays bass on Miles Runs of the Voodoo Down on Bitches Brew uh, he was a member of Electric Flag, uh, so, you know, definitely this was a, a nice little, uh, you know, a folk album that I listened to, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll bite. So, so I guess this is probably one of his better albums from what I hear, so. Uh, I got this one. This is for the missus. Uh, you know, you always got to do a little bit of shopping for her, too, when you don't take her along. So I got the uh, Fairport Convention. Uh, basically, it's called Fairport Chronicles. Kind of like a best of of all their stuff from their first album up to 1972. So um, a couple albums in there. I think maybe four or five. I want to say even some stuff from Sandy Denny in there. Um, but I was I'm, I'm pumped about this one. I think this is really cool. There's some. It's kind of hard to find their LPs around here. Um, I can't know. I said that like every single one. But that's <laughs> why I bought them. But um, you know stuff from the first album, Legion of Leaf. Um, also unhalf bricking, so like uh, Percy's song, um, you know, Million Dollar Bash, you know, so great, some great cover tunes. And last but not least, and I kind of promised myself I would do this every time that uh, I crossed one off of the Holy Grail list, but, uh, you know, as, as vinyl connoisseurs that you are, and, uh, you know, um, Every time you cross one off of your holy grail list, it's definitely an exciting day. So here's mine, and without further ado, woo, I got the Twain Shall Meet from Eric Burton and the Albums. I'm going to do that every time. I promise you, every time I find an album on the holy grail list, I'm going to do that. So it was fantastic. But this definitely been looking for for a long time. So take a look at that. So it has uh, Sky Pilot and Monterey on it. So definitely good stuff. So um, again, all those. So it was about five bucks a piece. I think there was ten records there. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for taking time out of your day to take time with me and uh, enjoy in these things together. So <laughs> again, take care. And until tomorrow, signing off. So we'll see you around.